rolling into our headliner brought to you by Bruno's Pizza. Any large at $15.99. Order yours today at Bruno's ND. Jared, it's a favorite of mine that we have for our headliner 2018 ND Country Fest alumnus and North Dakota and Midwest region favorite of everybody's Brianna Helbling. How are you, madam? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks for jumping on with us. We're yeah, thanks excited. for coming. We are super excited to have have Miss Brianna. Brianna, right. you know, let's talk about the background, lady. What did you? Uh, what got you into country music? Oh boy. I mean, how much time do we really have for that? I not mean, much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as much as you want. Yeah, just, honestly, typical Taylor Swift. She kind of started me out with country music and songwriting and everything. I started piano in kindergarten, moved on to guitar lessons. And from there, things kind of took off. And I'm like, I want to try to pursue music as a career. Wow. So it's a, it's a Taylor Swift um, influence type of influence, huh? It is, yeah. So I don't know a lot about country music. I'm more of a punk, ska sort of rock sort of guy. So I really have to do my research. So when I popped up and uh, typed your name into Google, up came American Idol. So how was that? Yeah, so that was kind of a crazy thing. Back in 2017, I was only 16 years old. What? And I, crazy. yeah, I auditioned in Fargo and got pushed on through another callback and then another callback. I did not quite make it to the celebrity judges, but I did make it to LA where I got to play for all the executive producers. And that was crazy. It was so much fun. <laughs> Wow. How many live events or shows did you do prior to that? Were you, were you like extremely, like extremely new or did you have a lot of experience prior to doing the auditions? Yeah. So I started performing when I was 10. Obviously I have, I still have so much learning to do, but I've come a long way since then. I was already playing with the band by then and doing plenty of solo shows, but I, I look back now and I'm like, wow things have changed so much since even 2017 like I just feel like I know myself better as an artist and what my goals are what I want I had blonde hair back then so I don't even look the same really but <laughs> it's been fun <laughs> <laughs> makes sense <laughs> that's great you, know, you change your look right yeah, right <laughs> yeah you gotta <laughs> 2018 we had you at nd country fest it was a great show what we've had people that were on prior uh to this interview we always asked them well, how was the experience at nd country fest how was the whole day for you and if you can explain that to our listeners that are listening and then obviously to our people that uh, jump onto our youtube channel that can come and watch it yeah so i'm not just saying this because i was able to play nd country fest was it's still one of the best times in my life. I look back on pictures, on videos. There's just so much to do for everyone. For as from a musician's perspective, you can network with other musicians, jam out when you're not playing, hang out. But for everyone else, it's so much fun just to see people, people you haven't seen in a while. So many people have just run into each other and been like, what are you doing here? And just dance to your favorite music. There's camping. I know that I think it was, well, obviously not 2020, but in 2019, you had me play an acoustic show on the campgrounds. So yeah. there's music all the time. And it's just, it's so much fun. The three days go by so fast. Is there one specific moment in, in, in 2018 that you remember that you can kind of sticks out for you? I honestly would say the second that I walked on the stage to play, like we opened up for Confederate Railroad in 2018. And that was just, surreal because I've never been on a stage that big and everything and I was like is this for real like you want us to <laughs> now? it was so much fun and everything about it it's hard to pick just one moment really when you guys you did an amazing job and you always do an amazing job at all your all your performances and in everything so we we highly appreciate you and and everything that comes with Brianna Helbling um yeah, how about writing Talk to us about writing. How hard is it to write a song? I mean, what, what, you know, are you constantly looking for inspiration? Are you like, what drives writing a song? Like that, like a lot of listeners, like even for me, like I've never written a song. I couldn't write a song. I, I know you. I've written a lot of speeches. Right. <laughs> <laughs> written a lot of briefs. I've done a bunch no, of that. a lot of briefs. I know you picked up piano at five and mm -hmm. like I, my parents tried to get me to take the piano when I was a kid. And at a certain point after about a year, I think my piano teacher just came to my mom and said, look, 
it's never going to happen. <laughs> he can do the theory, but he has no talent. <laughs> so I got to assume it's kind of like that when you're writing a song. You're like, I don't know. Are you good at poems? Poems? Yeah. Like, I've never tried. You didn't try when you were a kid? Oh, like, well, sure. For back then, I was never good back then. Either, <laughs> so. I mean, yeah, songwriting. I guess sometimes it comes really easy and sometimes it is insanely hard. I know during quarantine, especially, I have been doing so much songwriting. Um, I'm also in college, so that's kind of made me have to shift my focus a little bit, which is hard for me because I want to songwrite all the time. But songs like Better Run, for instance, which was our first single, that was one of the songs that I wrote, I'd say, maybe a half an hour. But then I'm like, uh, it's not good enough. I'm just gonna keep it in my phone, never share it. And then all of a sudden we have a music video, our first single, like songs kind of come and go, I guess, as they please. To me, when I try really hard to write a song is when the worst song comes out of it. And when I'm finally at my point where I'm like, oh, it doesn't matter. If I can't write a song, I'll just wait. And then 10 minutes later, I'm like, oh, I kind of like how this is going. Maybe we'll see what happens. So it's so unpredictable. <laughs> Do you ever have that moment where it's like 3 a.m., you wake up and you're like, oh, and then you just start you going crazy on the, on the notepad and the notebook and you're like, yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you again? like that? I do it one more I time. I hate that. No, no, no. I'm going to cut flow. that. I'm going to cut that. That was really good. Uh, I, can you do that again? No. no. Come on, buddy. <laughs> maybe later on. Maybe later. You know I'm going to cut <laughs> maybe it. Maybe in a duet later. It's going to be a button. <laughs> I think that's what we're going to go with Ralphie's Top 3 from now on. <laughs> <laughs> so have you had that moment where it's early in the morning or late at night and you're like, whoa, this would be great? I'd say, I mean, I'm kind of a night owl. So usually by 3 a.m. I'm still awake. Um, <laughs> Me but too. That's, I was playing gigs late, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's still where a lot of songs. I remember I went to watch another band play music actually in Fargo and it was 2.30. I was sitting in my car and I'm like, I need to write this song. So I go grab an electric guitar. You obviously couldn't hear it because it wasn't plugged in. And I just wrote a song in the car at like 2.30. And I'm like, sweet. I guess that just happened. So <laughs> yes, it does happen. <laughs> <laughs> so in COVID, you did a lot of songwriting. Did you do anything? You know, how did that affect you? What was your last show, I guess, before the lockdown? Yeah, so one of our last shows, actually, I think our last one, we did the Country Fest tour with you guys. Yeah. So oh, that, wow. yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> it was that close. It was, right? Yeah. It was so much fun. Our last like full band show aside from that was the winter show end of February, but it's crazy to think how long that's been since then. Like we had to be so creative when it came to COVID and quarantine because every musician they want to still play. It kills us not to be able to play in front of people. So uh, we started doing a lot of Facebook lives. And I actually, with another Fargo musician, we did some driveway concerts. Oh, so really? that was something really cool because people could bring their chairs and wear their masks and socially distance. And it was outside, so it was still okay. And that kind of helped a lot for musicians like me who <laughs> wanted to play. And you, you, played a, you played a couple shows, right? And recently, is that correct? Yeah, thankfully things have been picking up a bit, but now it seems like they're flipping around again, which is kind of a bummer, but we've played quite a few shows in Fargo, actually, at the Windbreak, and Shock and Sally's done some acoustic shows. We've done a couple in Bismarck Mandan, which is where I'm from, so that's really fun to play there still, but things are definitely have been canceled, so many of them, so hopefully next year we can pick up again. Right, exactly. Right. And we do know that you released a bunch of material too in the last what about six months? I think seven months. Yeah, I we started the same. Our first single, Better Run, came out in July. Our second single, Sandbar, came out in August, and then our whole six song EP came out in September. And it's I guess for what the year was, I'm really glad we had that in our back pocket to still have some kind of excitement. But it's it's been fun. There's been a lot of cool feedback, and it's been awesome. And there's videos too. Yes. Right? Yes. Better Run is our music video for it. It's on YouTube and Facebook. On Facebook alone, it's reached almost 100,000 people, which is crazy. Wow. So, right. That's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> that, it, that was so much fun to make too. It's, when did you, uh, where'd you make it and when did you do it? Yeah, we actually recorded it in June with Quantum Productions. I think they changed their name to Quantum Digital now, if I'm correct. 
But those creative types are always changing their names. <laughs> yeah, right? You oh, gotta. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, We're gonna try something new. Fun. What's that? They're gonna try something new. They wanna, you know, update it. We're digital now, whatever. <laughs> yeah, keep people on their toes. <laughs> right. So you filmed it. Where did you film it at? That was at Little Heart Pond in Mandan, actually. Oh. So yeah, it was just a super random location, but it turned out really sweet. What was the inspiration about Sandbar? Which I believe that's probably about the Missouri River, which splits mid Bismarck and okay. Mandan. I'd say that's a fair fair statement. You're totally right. I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've grown up just going on the pontoon and on the river all the time whenever we didn't have shows. And I'm like, you know what? Let's write a, a fun love song about the sandbar that people can just jam to while they're on the sandbar. So I'm like, let's see what happens. And it was fun. They're great. I've seen, I've seen them. It's, it's, it's good stuff. Right. I mean, you're to check it out. I can't wait to Zoom. There is a question before we get into our other stuff, which is really cool for everybody. Wow. But there's a question that I usually ask everybody. Not everybody, but usually, I think this one is, would be good for you. Um, if you were to do anything in the world, non-music related, what would you be doing? Oh, you totally put me on the spot. Well, it's kind of <laughs> That's why he me. does it. <laughs> He's good at it. It's his thing. <laughs> oh, boy. I mean, things definitely could change. Like, my oh, ideas always change. Course. Music is number one. I know at one point I thought opening my own boutique would be super fun because I love fashion. Yep. I also love animals. Like, furry friends rock and rescue is something I've been we've been playing with and doing music with and I actually just adopted a cat from them and I would love to be able to do something with animals whether it's help out with some shelters or you know open some type of like what Miranda Lambert does kind of she has her own you know shelter for dogs and cats and I think that's so cool but that's cool. Lot. I could see it. I like. I it. believe it's it. A good answer. I believe it. Now you got something special for our listeners and our viewers on YouTube. You're gonna play a little song for us. Is that right? Yes, I, I'd say so. All right. All right. So, I can't wait. Thank you. Here's better run. I saw your man go on his screen, and you know I. To be an overdramatic drama queen, but this time I do. Three years ago, you let it down, followed him around this shady town. So go away, you dusty clown, cause I'm sick of you. Hello, there she goes, I can repeat on that radio. Find a good vibe, just then take it so she won't leave it alone. Hello, baby, it comes next to hot beat bitches like a drum ain't stressed to me that I'm the one so funny that you better run. And I'm sick of the games we've been playing. I don't mean to offend, I'm just saying. Just so it. when YouTube comes in and gives us a copyright claim strike, you're going to give us permission to use that song, right? 100%, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I love the video because you're, you're, in, you're in that old school car, right? At the end. Oh, yeah. And then you turn over your shoulder. Is that right? I think I, I, think I was. Yeah, I actually borrowed that car from my, my aunt and uncle. So if they're watching, thanks for that. <laughs> and you drove it like you stole it. <laughs> I did. I probably drove it a whole 
three feet because I was so nervous, but oh, really? the magic of video, it can look like I drove it miles. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So how can all of our listeners and how can all of our viewers on YouTube find your music and find where your next show date is? Tell them how they can reach you. Yeah. So I, we're on just about all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, even TikTok. Um, mm. You can check us out. Just Brianna Helbling, Brianna Helbling Music. And we keep updates on there. Also, my website is just briannahelbling.com. And we are pretty good about keeping things up to date. And that EP, they can listen where? Yeah, the EP is on all streaming platforms. So iTunes, Spotify. And we also have hard copies. So if you can make it to a show Ooh, or, see. yeah, make it to a show Fine. or send us a message, we'll get you one. Vinyl. Oh, good idea, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brianna, we appreciate you so much. Thank you. Keep doing the great work that you're doing. And um, thanks for your time. We, we really yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. That was great. Thank you. See you. Bye. Oh, wait. Wait. Okay. So what we'll do is this audio, <laughs> the audio will drop Friday on the podcast platform and then the following friday is when the actual youtube video will drop so a week from friday the youtube video will drop so then you can do whatever you like with it you know you can share it you can yeah. put it out there and all that kind of stuff i will definitely do that and if you have any questions you can obviously contact me at any time and and go from there perfect thank you again for having me yeah thanks for jumping on you're great that was great you sounded awesome and Thank keep rolling. You. I know it's a tough time for everybody and just keep, just keep plowing through and, and eventually the stuff is going to be gone and going away and, and you will, the, the bright stars will shine <laughs> the ones that keep moving forward. I like that. Thank That's you. For positive. The <laughs> you, Brianna. Say hi to wow. mom and nice dad for me. You. Bye bye. Nice to meet you. Brothers and sisters, hey. I hear you asking yourself day after day, what am I going to have for lunch? Do I want another burger? No. Do I need another taco? No. Brothers and sisters, may I introduce you to Bruno's Pizza. Pizza is the bread of endless possibilities. What can go on a pizza can go in a calzone or wrap. Look beyond a pepperoni and put it to pizzas in a snack. If you like heat, try the lava Hawaiian. Marauder Pizza is also kicking. You need Bruno's Pizza in your life. Let the humble Bruno's Pizza lift you up from your hunger and deliver you into the realm of satisfaction. East Front Avenue online at brunosnd.com. Can I get a napkin? If you're about to love what you're about to hear, that's our boys, the Quaker City Nighthawks. And you know what? Here's to you. Here's to me. You know the rest. And we are... Hey!